Okay, so today I'm going to try out a few new things. Uh, one of them being the microphone. I've only ever really had the text chat on previous streams. What I think I want to do today is uh, try out developing a game pretty much from scratch. So for my uh, inaugural stream, I'm going to try to recreate a... Uh, uh, yep. <laughs> yeah, finally got a microphone. So I want to try to create a uh, recreate a game that I had originally written about 30 years ago, which is uh, showing my age. So uh, just a pretty simple side view platform game without any actual platforms, just the screen edge. And uh, I think I had just played Joust for the first time, and I was inspired by the control scheme or something, and so I figured I, w I would make something kind of like that, and it sort of evolved into this. I mean, I wrote this originally on a 286, so uh, don't expect it to be really fancy. What I've got so far is a basic repository I set up, and I've just got... The stuff that's kind of too fiddly for me to, to do live on stream, like all the, the graphics. I got the CGA uh, mock-up images for the bird, and the egg that cracks, and the feathers. And uh, I'm just going to put together all the actual code for this. And the only code I have right now... Uh, so I've got the, the readme, license, all the standard stuff, a big to-do list where I basically describe sort of what I'm trying to do. I'm, I'm recreating the game as it was, uh, you know, 30 years ago. More or less true to the original in terms of look and feel, but obviously I'm going to be using more modern uh, tech. So I got a rough roadmap of the features and the basic stuff that I think I need to do in what order. And it goes kind of on for a bit. And then there's a milestone where I'll reach parity with the original. And then after that, a uh, few ideas I had for things that could, uh, you know, touch it up a little bit more. But I could, uh, could be open to suggestions, I suppose, beyond that. So other than that, the only code I've got so far is the uh, configuration for the engine. I'm using uh, the Love engine. Everything's going to be in Lua. And I've got uh, basically like this of titles and I set the, uh, the window size based on the CGA graphics of the original. And turned off a handful of modules I don't think I'm going to be using. And then I've got, uh, I got the artwork and then I got the sound effects. And what I did was I figured out some frequency tables and um, basically duration and frequency square waves that I would have played out of the PC speaker. And uh, so this is more or less just more like more art assets. And then what's left to do is actually generate the sounds and then play them. So let's see uh, what we got right now. If we just run this thing... black screen pretty much what we'd expect so let's uh, I guess dive into I guess this one's done then let's start drawing something so I need a main dot Lua and function now let's see if I can remember this thing takes parameters or anything. Always good to have the wiki on hand. And this thing, a bunch of callbacks. I don't think I'm used to using the parameters out of them, but I might as well check to see if they take any. Mm, okay. I need a, I need an image. And then we'll just plop 
melt this thing down. And like enterish. Uh, what's going on? Is it gonna run? No, I'm gonna run. What was the what's the correct function for this? I feel like this is the stuff that I always do at the very beginning of development and then forget how to do later on. I bet it's because I turned off too many modules. Some of these are probably dependencies. There we go. Let's try that. Okay, good. I can actually draw something. That's the start. Now we need to actually have a position for it. Now the first decision is how to structure these and I think what I want to do is I'm going to stick with the really brain dead simple approach right now. Because I can always refactor this stuff later, but in the original that I wrote, which is my best guide for memory here, I was working in QBasic and I don't think it even supported structured data, so everything was just named variables. So I'll get a feel for whether the code ends up looking similar to what I had before. And now we need to do stuff like, uh, well, it's in my to-do list. Ah, uh, yes, I need to actually put this stuff in an update cycle. And I had this uh, plan here to use a fixed tick rate because the physics are always a uh, linear approximation. And with a tick rate, variable you end up with variable uh, rounding error so i've tried using i've tried even using proper physics engines like box 2d that comes with love that's supposed to handle a variable update interval and it just i still get all kinds of uh, weird like rounding error type artifacts like characters jump height varies depending on your frame rate so I'm just going to stick with doing fixed ticks. And then we need, well, what do we use here? Let's store what the residuals. And let's scope this. A little bit of tidiness. I always forget to do this, but it helps in the long run, I think. I don't feel like typing magic numbers over and over again. clean enough. Alright, let's position X, position Y, and the bird is actually 32 by 32. So, minus 16, minus 16 to center it. DX, 0. The 
velocity will just be in units per tick. Pixels per tick, I guess. Why the do end block? Uh, it's, it scopes these variables here. So because this function, I'm actually writing a function outside of the scope into the, the love uh, object. Uh, so this do end block essentially keeps everything scoped inside here and this is the only thing that gets to escape. So I scope these so that if I happen to reuse resid or tick size to mean something different later, which sometimes I accidentally do, I don't have to worry about uh, affecting these guys. Do end is, I guess, I think it's, it's like a, a loop that doesn't actually loop. So it's just a minimum construct, I think, to uh, create a scope. In JavaScript, you'd use ifies, the immediately invoked function expression. Now let's do some gravity here, and let's see, downward is positive. And how much do I want in one tick? Well, I think this is going to be one of those fiddly numbers where I'm just going to try it, and then try it, whoa, that was too much. And I'm going to decrease it, and I'm just going to mess with it until I get a value I like. Yeah, that feels about right. Yeah, it feels a little high, to be honest. I kind of wonder whether my graphics are too big, too, because it's been a long time since I looked at a CGA screen. Okay. Falls nice and slow. Uh, I can check off a couple of things. Did that. Did the kinematics. Did... Yep, okay, and then we'll throw in a little bit of uh, air friction. Wow, that is some thick air. I do remember these numbers being pretty low. Yeah, that looks about right. Okay. We'll go with that for now. We may tweak things later to get the action to, be, to the right pace. And now the bouncing. Right, I probably need bird width and bird height. I may end up having to redo the graphics at some point, which may change the size of the bounding box we want. Okay, so uh, what am I doing? I need to do this. Okay, if position X is less than... Yeah, less than zero, then... I think I need to correct for position. I think just make sure, making sure the velocity is positive will, will work. Yeah, okay, then greater than, oh, and then now we need the screen width and screen height. Don't want to get it dynamically because I'm I want to stick with the 320 by 200 and eventually when I want to make this thing bigger I'm gonna I think use a scaler and stretch it instead of making like a huge playing field. I'll fix those. Uh, greater than bound width minus third width. There's some off by one errors in there, but I kind of don't care much. Because I don't think they're going to be big enough 
make a difference to be noticeable. Because it is possible to go off the edge of the, the screen by a couple of pixels in each case. And all my X's become Y's, and all my W's become H's, and my favorite kind of bug is when I miss one. Always takes a long time to track it down, too. What happens? Oh, a nice bounce. Don't know if the um, contact switches fast enough to see that. Oh, and he's sinking down slowly because gravity's still working. So, what I could do is I could just add a correction factor. to see if this is enough to make sure because I did realize that so there is a problem where when I don't um, police the boundaries with uh, in terms of position and I just use velocity that the velocity so if I don't check the direction of the velocity here and I keep inverting it then you end up getting stuck And if I, and here now, if I don't have this correction factor, then if your velocity is very low on that axis, then you may end up never being able to get out of there. Well, things will get a little easier when I actually put controls in here so you can control the bird. But let's just see what happens here. I guess, yeah, because the contact switching is slow, you miss the initial drop from the center of the screen. So there's a little bit of extra bounce energy in here that he gets from uh, the edge of the screen just kind of kicks him up a little bit. I guess I guess maybe the instead of doing this fudge factor thing, I'm just gonna actually set the position properly so that it can't sink past the edge. This is more sophisticated, more correct things than I did originally, but. I kind of I want to recreate the play, but I'm not really going to create recreate every bug. This should be easy enough. Okay, here we go. And it should settle, and I probably still get a little bit of vibration. Oh, but not much. Just pretty much stops. Okay. I guess the vibration is probably too small to see. Now we have got that, and now here comes the fun part. Let's actually put some controls in. So the original QBasic used in key dollar sign, which was a variable that would hold the last key press. So you couldn't hit multiple keys at the same time. And this works by, uh, the control for this is you like tap an arrow key and then it just gives out one burst of thrust in that direction. So the bird flaps his wings and uh, and, and then gets a little velocity in that direction. It's not like a continuous thing. So, I'll start out by just detecting the key presses and just store the last movement. Yeah. I'm pretty sure I know what the callback, what the parameters for this one is. Now all I gotta do is make sure I remember what the actual key codes are. This so might as well always check the documentation. Oh, 
up, down, left, right, yeah, pretty obvious. Yeah, a flap, how does Flappy Bird work? That's like a, uh, it's one of those continuous scrolling things where you just have to flap and then you have to avoid the vertical obstacles, right? So I think it was just, what, one axis? And this you have four axis control. I guess I could use this syntax. Oh yeah, I need a variable for this, really. Because I'm going to need to tune that. And I kind of hate using ELSIF chains, but in this case, the theoretically more elegant way of using uh, a table to make a switch statement is too heavy for this. Yeah, so this, there, there is going to be a certain Flappy Bird-likeness to the controls. Uh, one thing I'm, I don't have in here right now is a cooldown, so you can just spam the flap key as fast as you want. And I, in theory, I should actually have a cooldown because I'm also going to have an animation for it. And when I animate, I'm not going to want to have... Uh, I'm not going to want the, the wings to always be in the flapped position. I want them to go back up again. I don't know. That, that one, this one. Oh, nope, 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 nope. I select... These guys, that, there we go. Okay, so now I'm actually writing that. And it, okay, so I can get the gravity and the thrust acceleration here, and then I just need to reset these. I heard somewhere that using this destructuring assignment sort of syntax is a bit slower in Lua, but I don't know if it matters in the JIT world, so uh, I'm not going to care. Whoops, something is happening here. I can do stuff. Oh, oh I know. I did this thing, didn't I? Forgot to change code, yep. Copy paste is risky. Save yourself a little bit of time. Okay, and now I can actually flap around. Might need a little more thrust on the upward. Especially if I'm going to put a cooldown in. But yeah, basic controls work. Doing all my own physics here instead of using a physics engine, partly because uh, I've messed around with the physics engine and I've run into all kinds of like issues with it, like this crash on body escape the memoizer, um, and then all these things that I'm having to work around anyway, like that variable tick speed problem, and it's just really heavyweight for something like this where um, the like, they're only going to be a few moving items at a time, and they all have pretty similar behavior. And then, um, I mean, a part of what I wanted to do here was sort of, you know, walk through the basics. Like, you know, what I did when I originally built this thing, building a game pretty much completely from scratch. And actually, the, uh, the graphics being pre-made kind of fit with that, too, because I... I was working in QBasic and I wrote a program that drew the vector graphics for the uh, the bird and the egg and all that stuff. And then uh, that stuff was way too slow on a 2D6 to do real time per frame. So I figured out a way to use some graphics formats that QBasic supported to actually save them to disk. So I, I built a program that generated my graphics, and then I had a, a separate program to actually play the game. So since I'm 
just scoping this to um, just the actual gameplay, it's fine to just throw the graphics in that way. All right, so we got the bird. We got now it's time to do the egg. And that's why I named everything bird. And now it's time to just start copying and pasting. I could I could start abstracting this stuff out now, but I kind of feel like I don't want to necessarily abstract things out when I build my second copy. I usually wait until the third copy because sometimes the second one turns out to diverge in behavior. Uh, it's always a pain to remember how to do is search and replace within a selection. There we go. And then retune some of these things. And here's where we run into our first problem. They can't both start at the same place. So I'm going to start this guy at like 240. And this guy at like 120. And okay, now I got them defined. Now it's going to actually physic them and then draw them. And this is where I'm starting to feel like, even though I I did all this as linear copy paste QBasic code, now I'm starting to feel like maybe I want to have a thing for this. Ugh. All right. <laughs> this is gonna be ugly, but I'm gonna do it for now. I can always refactor later. few things are going to change, going to probably have the same damping, all that stuff, same gravity. The acceleration is going to be something completely different, which I'm going to have to figure out later. Yeah, physics object will be reasonable, and that's probably where this is going to go in the long run. Probably about the time I add the third object, the feather, that's when I'm going to start uh, refactoring this stuff and finding the commonalities and all that kind of crap. And I'm not going to have more than one. The original game supported one bird, one egg, and one feather. There was nothing dynamic about it. This one, I do think that it would be uh, pretty easy to support having more than one feather on the screen at a time. So I'll probably do that. I mean, the, 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 I never really talked much about that, the gameplay, but it's pretty simple. The bird throws feathers at the egg trying to help crack it open and the egg um, kind of runs around wildly and bumps into the bird and makes it kind of a pain. Just a bunch of, uh, you know, things kind of flying around on the screen, really. Mostly just playing around with the physics engine and stuff. Okay, so what did I do? I forgot to draw the thing. That means I need to start loading more graphics. This is not quite at the point where it's time to make multiple code files, but it's not going to be long. Okay. And I can control one of them, and they don't collide. I got the egg, and then now uh, the periodic random impulse. This part. This should be... Well, how do I do that? What's a good... I think, I think I used a fixed number of frames before, so... I'll just start it at zero, and then I'll get one right away.
probably like two seconds. I mean, I could have spent the first what, 20 minutes of this writing a decent 2D vector class, but that would have been kind of boring to watch. Oh, it's kind of nudging around a bit. And in the early levels, it should not move much, but then as you complete waves, then it starts to get a little bit more violent. And that will become a variable at some point, but I'm not going to worry about that yet. Uh, I get to check a thing off the list. Oh, and now we got our first interesting thing to do, a collision. And that means... I actually need to interleave these. So we do that first, and then air resistance, bird egg, bird egg, bird egg, and then our integrals, and then the bounding. The collision happens right here. Yeah, about as good as anywhere. Oh boy, how does this work? It's bird width plus bird height plus egg width plus egg height. Five by four, and I'm just going to go with a circular collision for now, and if I feel like we need to, oh, and I need to square that. Er, I guess I can do the square root, why not? Good old Pythagorean. for the arrow keys and hit the page up, page down, and I have to go find where I, I went. Oh boy, now... to happen is them to repel each other and this is where there's a little bit of tricky math the distance I normalize the vector and get just the direction. If I divide by distance squared, then I get a smaller value the further apart they are. So I'm basically doing Hooke's Law, which is a good way to do uh, elasticity, I think. Now I feel kind of silly for doing the square root, which I forgot to do anyway. Yeah, you know what? I'm not going to do the square root. I'm going to make this and square these because old superstition, even though in the days of fast floating point and jit and everything, it hardly matters. Squaring is a lot faster than taking a square root, and you can compare squares just as much as you can compare square roots. I 
I guess I can do this all in one thing. I keep forgetting that there's an actual exponent operator and I don't have to multiply things by themselves and store them in a variable. So I don't need that and this should be distance squared. I can keep the other collide variable vaguely named because it was already not a very helpful name. I'm going to need a spring constant here. Now I'm going to set it small because I get the feeling that this is going to possibly be crazy. Oh my god, I got the bird. Yeah, because the bird is more positive than this should be away. constant I made. Oh, let's see what happens. Hmm, not much. In fact, oh, I sensed it a little bit, so I was wrong. This is actually pretty small. Let's make it bigger by quite a bit, and let's see what happens. Oh, yeah, there we go. Bouncing off each other pretty well. Oh, I can't get him out of the corner. Okay, uh, another thing that's happening is they are colliding based on the distances of their upper left corners, but because they're not the same size, that's not the same thing as colliding based on distance between their centers. Oh, that makes this expression look really ugly. even now. Yep. Nice. Alright, that, that, I'm hope I'm getting to the part where I actually add the animations. I don't have the animations. I don't even have the thing in here at all. Oh man, that's... Okay, so I'm just gonna do the animations now because it's starting to drive me nuts. The bird is a well. The bird is the only thing that actually has a real animation. So, what I should do is I should just go ahead and start loading these graphics. Let's instead of doing local variables for each one, I think we can afford to preload them all. And let's see, it's a file system. It should give me a listing of all the PNG files. Remember which one is the not deprecated version. Okay, oh, plain old four looks fine. Okay, so now we need to figure out which files are our PNG files. We want to know what which ones are files. Uh, filter type. Yep, that's the magic.
Okay, I'll do this string check here. I should find everything that's PNG and a file. And we'll have an images table. If I can get it. There we go. Strip off the PNG extension. I'm going to regret using dashes instead of underscores if I do that because then I yeah so I want to underscore these because I'd rather use dot notation instead of brackets I gotta have a better thing for this There we go. Let's see if that still works. And not so much. I get that bug output here too. There we go. Well, now we get to actually debug that. Trace statements. Didn't find anything. I'm using get directory items wrong. debugging then. Alright, animations. We're gonna do animations. National Weather Service. Doppler radar. Indicated a severe thunderstorm capable of producing a tornado. Eleven miles west of North Hampton. Moving east at 40 miles per hour. When a tornado warning is issued based on Doppler radar, it means a tornado may already be on the ground. Leave that no. Alright, let's do this. I'm gonna factor out the the thrust amount here. here. Not really worth bothering with that. I'll call it 
to thrust and actually y equals I'm not even gonna bother messing with that code I don't want to have to copy and paste all those lines but whatever put it up here actually because I'm gonna have that feather throwing mechanic later it's not even worth writing a function for either code oh, and I forgot to actually do many things with this thing I have to uh, okay terminal you're bothering me An update yeah I'm doing the update because the animations should be not not really on the same tick schedule and, uh, well, I don't know. Just, I have a floating point time and it's easier to do this, I think. time running subtract the, oh and yeah I gotta move this into the actual function don't I there we go subtract that time delta from it if we're out then reset back to idle and then clear the timer so we don't keep running this crap over and over and let's try it oh, yep and I forgot to actually make it change the draw last thing works with that flap wow that is a long cooldown that's why this is a variable somewhere up, up here cut that in half that's okay flaps okay Oh yeah, and I'm going to be bothered by the fact that now that there is not a facing direction control. I need the bird to change the direction it faces when I hit these keys. Okay. Stack of locals is starting to look pretty ugly. That, that's going to be uh, interesting to deal with. I do kind of wonder how long I'm going to be able to hold out, though. And we always use the coordinate of the upper left corner of the texture not of the position where we're drawing it so because I'm going to flip it on the x-axis the texture upper left is going to be in the upper right here I have to add the width and then zero rotation and negative one x scale and one y scale I think that should do it. Position X, position Y, and run it. Oh, yep, and he turns around when I hit the arrow keys. Wow, that, that works.
Okay. Big, big thing coming up now. Adding the feathers. This is where we might consider making physics objects. And yep, yeah, that makes sense. A lot of this code is still pretty repetitive and some of this stuff that fits in between is not going to be hard to just reference to the physics objects. I don't even really need to do proper like classes or inheritance or anything. I'll just make an initializer function. Initial velocity, I always start those at zero. No, I'm not always going to start them at zero, am I? Because the feathers have an initial velocity. I mean, really, I could just pass an init table. And I can put in most of the stuff I need here. should make the positions actually be the center. All I have to do is adjust how I draw it and then do all the physics thing. Box2D does it that way, so maybe there's some merit to it. too much. Alright, and then enters. And now what should a physics object do? This stuff here feels like I can leave it in place. generic collide function. This stuff, this stuff needs to go in inside. Oh, what do I what do we even call this? Not really a run function because I'm not running everything, I'm just running pieces, but good enough for now, think of a better name later. What do we 
got in here? We got air resistance, we've got adding velocity to position, and then doing the bounce check. Let's save this a little bit. See what it looks like. The bird face got removed. Awesome. Doesn't look half bad. We get rid of all that. Oh wow! To do collisions, we need to check everything pairwise. I had a lot more objects that would not necessarily be a good way to do it but I don't, so. Oh, and I forgot to adjust for the fact that I'm using the center position now. That, I'll get to that in a minute. Get all this stuff in. Now I'm going to go back and look at that. physics now, check, and then the last thing is the drawing. this in my physics object. I don't like the name in it because it's no longer really an initialization table, it's really the object. things a little. Alright, now I want to test it. I got code that doesn't work. I'm going to start removing features. And let's see if that's enough. Not enough. Oh, 
Oh, that's right. I forgot. I need these attributes. Everything works except collisions again. Now we have actual physics objects that should make a little bit of this easier. confused. What am I returning here? Yeah, I gotta think about that. This function will also do the collision uh, movement thing. I'll include that. I'm going to have to actually return whether there is a collision. Okay, so I need the, the distance squared and whether there was a collision. The main thing I really need is this collision bit. I'm gonna worry about the rest later. I did all that. Uh, I think because I was going to add all the feathers, so I'm going to need... That's right, I didn't want to have to copy and paste all that crap. Alright, let's see if we're back to where we were. Things are moving around, and they're bumping into each other. Good. Hopefully I didn't violate the spirit of what I was working on too much. I mean, uh, the original program was 1500 lines of code, and I'm just over 150, so I think, uh, I think it's probably worth it. I'm adding a feather. Input to fire the feather. Keep typing else if like it's shell scripting or something. And we'll throw on the next 
content pod. I'm just going to have a single feather for now, which is what I did in the original. these fiddly things. with the birds so I'm going to start them sort of where the birds hand position should be oh and that reminds me I got animations to do here Interesting. Just like that. Yep. I'm going to give it initial velocity. Y minus one. Give it a little arc. Oh, that's right. I put the face variable there, didn't I? And it doesn't belong there. I'm not going to put a one-off feature. Oh, that's right. It's not going to be a one-off feature, is it? Yeah, because... have a pointing direction too. That means I don't need this. object. special cases and I'm just going to do the gravity part inside the object. Why not? There's my gravity constant anyway. Only needs to be in one place. I don't need like a big table of constants. I don't have enough constants to worry about that. and that is wrong and that's going to be kind of funny and I'll worry about that later what I'm worried about is all the bugs that I just introduced where did that go? there it is 
probably forgot to have a space. That ain't it. 39 draw. Oh. Face facing, whatever. I forgot to check if there's one. Okay, yeah, I can throw the feather. And it sits there. Oh, and face is not one, face is bird dot face. That's what that is. So, I'm facing the right. Yep, I launch with a point forward, and if I'm facing to the left, point forward. Now, when the feather hits the edge of the screen, it should go off of it and then be deleted. Disable the bounce check. And then do a separate thing to check. Should be able to throw these things and then they fall off the bottom. And oh, I forgot to clear the throw flag. Hilarious. And yeah, for some reason, if I I like to use nil and true instead of false and true, and I don't know exactly why. Okay, now I can throw more of these things. I want to throw it to the right. Oh, I see what I did wrong. I don't need this. Facing does not affect the Y coordinate. Alright, there we go. Oh, and when I tap, it cues up another throw. So if I fire and then fire again, he throws and then that feather comes out later. So that. I don't want that. Uh, I need to check this. Yeah. Silly. So I cannot do the, even do the throwing animation until that one's off the screen. Yeah, the nil saving memory thing feels like a uh, a weird. It's a micro-optimization, which, you know, I'm supposed to believe are, are wrong, but I can't beat the compulsion. Oh, we got feathers. We have the input to fire. Got the physics, and yes, it was a time for a refactor, what do you know? And now, finally, it's time to actually check for damage. Do some actual gameplay parts of this. all the collide checks together. Alright, let's see if that bounce value is what I like. This will probably send the feather flying. Whereas I'm going to delete the feather instead, but the egg should get knocked back. There we go. Okay, that wasn't much force, actually. These things are supposed to be kind of like little thrown missiles. Well, I'm, I'm bad at this. <laughs> I think it's because my thrust control is actually really strong. 
I'm going to do this. I'm going to have a separate up thrust. And most of it will just use regular thrust. And that should balance out gravity a little bit. So it's easier to stay aloft now. But my side controls are a little more sensitive. I don't really have a good reason to stay off the bottom. Although, I guess if the egg is getting more violent, it'll be more dangerous down there eventually. Okay, so I can hit it. accumulate the damage and then draw a different frame and this will work for the first few hits should change the egg graphic oh there's a little crack hard to see it but yeah there's a little crack down there and then it'll crash once I finally hit a frame that I don't actually have one yet and that will be when I have to do the wind condition. Okay, there's my crash. Alright, so I got the feathers, egg collision, egg shows damage, and then now it's time to actually do the wind condition. So that means I need to know what level I'm on. And the level affects something. Where is the thing in effect? Ah, uh, this one. I want to figure out exactly what kind of. I'm just going to multiply and do it linear. I feel, I'll just have to decide at some point whether it feels like it's progressing too slowly at the beginning and then accelerates too much or vice versa or whatever. Now there's a level. if I can advance to the next level and have the egg get a little more should have twice the uh, the jitters when I make it to the next level crack is growing oh, and then now it's fresh egg another thing I probably should do is <laughs> well the original actually did the same thing I just had the egg heal in place. I could have it disappear and then get another egg or something. Now it's starting to move around more. Oh yeah. Bottom is not really dangerous because I don't have a health meter yet, but I will. I may need to change the arc on this thing. Oh no, the air resistance makes it come down pretty well. I do remember this game actually being too hard to actually play for me, so I was never very good at it. And the controls are kind of... It was always more of an experiment than a real, like, fun game to play. Feather missiles look a little hilarious. Trying not to get too close to it and trying to hit it with these things. Ah. 
Oh, lucky hit. Okay. That's enough of that. What do we got? Egg break, reset, increase the thrust. Got it. Okay, now it's time to actually have health. And then there'll be a status bar. That's where I need the Delta V. turn is the force of the collision which is square root yep true for the collision oh, what should I do I mean numbers are already truthy so I don't need that I don't need this one over the distance forget to do is I'm doing all this divided by distance squared if d square is less than one then d square equals one set a lower clamp on it just to make sure we don't divide by zero we do need a square root there if we're going to calculate the distance the hook force which will be truthy and will meet this criteria here for the feather egg collision but the bird egg collision this sort of convention of using zero to one and then just using floating point. I think I'm going to stick with that and see what this looks like. I don't have a good health gauge, so I'm going to make a crappy one. Put a number up there. Oh, I did not like that. Yeah, wow. Yeah, we turn off a lot of modules, and there's a lot of dependencies. So we're on. Try that. Oh, and, and hey, it can actually draw my crashes now. I forgot that that was a thing. No, yeah, okay, I forgot to check whether it actually happened. Ooh, there's some, oh, that, that, that hurt. Not that I'm being pushed, but it doesn't factor. It really should be. It really should be the square of this number. So I really do want one over distance squared. Because I want harder hits to be harder. to die quite that fast otherwise we'll never make it to any of the later waves I 
Alright, let's test the health. Gentle hit. Harder hit. Oh, so he deflected. Don't really take a lot of damage. I really feel like I was taking a lot more damage before. I mean, more, a lot more than a divide by five should be. I mean, I've only lost, what, 10% now. Oh, maybe it's a dis maybe it's because it's a distance squared thing. Oh, yes, that's right. That would change it. I want the quadratic. Come on. It just feels like maybe my frame rate is too high. If I just land on it really hard. Yeah, I can take about 2% damage there. Sometimes. Yeah, so the harder hits do more damage. That's what I want. I just need to tune this up a bit. So there's no guarantee? Really? Well, not sure. Oh, I'm not gonna yeah, I'm not gonna move my constants around and do that and I'll just end up with having to dig through huge tables of constants. Okay, so this is a decent damage rate. The original game just had fixed max health. Maybe I could be tempted to have some kind of regeneration of health or something. All right, it's time to make that an actual gauge of some kind. Now, let me go and get the actual color value for this health bar here. Four color palette. One, a third, and oh, it's almost exactly. Yep, okay. Jim to first floor escalator. All right, rectangle. First staff member, the gentleman and the child with the tricycle have now become stuck in the escalator. Thank you. Magenta for health. I guess I'll use black for unhealth. And there's a health bar. Whoa, yeah. And it does not reset my color between frames. That's a little surprising. I guess I have to do that. There we go. Oh, yeah, I'm taking some damage. Ouch. Little gentle bumps don't do as much. Hard hit does make a big difference. So as the levels advance, it will get more difficult. And what happens when I run out of health? I'm just gonna quit, because I think that's what the first original game did. Maybe eventually I can do a thing with that, but for now.
Alright, now... This should be fatal to... the bird and to the process. Yep. Oh, that was nice and abrupt. Bird health. Take damage, status bar, health gauge. Oh, and we should probably put the level up there too, shouldn't we? Okay, I'm going to do that in white, after all. Put it on top. like my trailing white space. Hopefully it takes numbers just the same and convert them. This one, I think, does. All right, let's see if that's got... Oh, all right, we got a level number up there. I guess I didn't really need to worry about margins so much. All right. I actually have to shoot this thing. To, you know, it, this is... I think the original did not have this many... Oh... Uh, egg damage levels. I think I'm going to double the damage that the feathers do. Hopefully that'll be a little less annoying. There we go, level two. Level three, all right. It's actually like starting to feel pretty good. I mean, the, the roadmap helps. And before I started, when I was planning this thing out, I kind of, so I listed the, I spec'd out basically all the features that this thing was gonna have in order to make it to parody with the original. Now look, we're only about a screen full left to do. And the trick is, uh, it's a lot easier to go and m more fun to do it in the process, too, if you order them correctly. So you have all the stuff you actually have to do to make something work first, and you also have the things that have the biggest impact on the gameplay first. So, not just like technical prerequisites, but actually the, m the bigger game features. So getting things on there and getting to move around, uh, and then... Uh, actually like react to player input and all that kind of stuff So we got status bar wave number and the seeker feathers were a, a weird sort of perk that I put into the original game uh, For completing some waves and and in theory was supposed to make it kind of easier to Like actually make it to the later waves Let's see what I can do here the, uh, the seeking algorithm was actually pretty terrible. The feathers didn't do physics if they were seekers. They just moved a certain fixed distance towards the egg. And they didn't even uh, check to see whether they were like X aligned or Y aligned. They just moved in the four diagonals. And ultimately what that meant is that your, your level is really high. The original game I think ended on level 50. Which, if I go just a uh, certain, yeah, this is, this is what it was like. It's ridiculous. It's pretty much unplayable. So, I think the game is going to have to end a little earlier than that. Ouch. Well, that's actually not all that bad now. 50 is pretty unplayable. The fact that this thing runs at 60 frames per second really helps instead of like the 10 I got on my 286. That 
back. So let's see what I can do with the sneakers. Should I do the original four diagonal crappy algorithm or should I try to do something a little more interesting? I mean, I have the physics engine, so it really feels like Feels like I should physic it. I'm gonna make gravity a variable so I can disable it for the seekers. I'm gonna pass it in to these guys. Put the default gravity. That way when I use a seeker, I can just set that to zero. Feather needs this. I really ought to just default these actually. Let's do that defaulting. I get tired of copying all this stuff in or everywhere. Actually, using dot calls here instead of colon because I'm just baking the uh, object in as a scope variable into these functions. So each function for each physics object is separate, and I'm recreating them and redeclaring them every time I make one. Uh, I can't really care about that. It's just not going to be a big enough problem. All right, so these now all are defaulted. Need to worry about that. Only need them if I need an override. Everything still works. Always retest. That health bar could stand to be a little thicker. But I don't want it to be too obtrusive. It's a little easier to see. I think the original health bar was one of those like progress bar looking things with a frame around it and it took up the same height as one line of text which uh, I'm not I'm not gonna go that retro for some reason I just don't like the look of those things anymore this is kind of what modern browsers tend to do for their progress bars especially on mobile and considering they don't have that much screen real estate not a bad lesson Oh, yeah, that hurt. Should I make that damage the egg, too, really? Maybe a good hit, but I don't care. I don't need to complicate things with a bunch of extra features that don't really enhance what we've got right now. Yeah, so I did want to nullify gravity, seek towards the egg continuously, and I wanted to have an animation frame for it. to have cash of these things I need to reward them first I want to grant one to start out with especially since I want to test it and then I'm gonna grant another one on a level up now, let's see the first level they're on level one, so level minus one, mod three, equals zero, then speakers. One. Every three levels you get one, you start out with one. And let's draw. Oh, that's right, I want to limit the total number you can have.
see if this works for gauge. Uh, what's going on? That might help to spell the name right. Yep. Ooh. Why is that? Because I started at 1, and this needs to be minus 1. There, now it's on the upper left, and I got a nice little gauge. And it occurs to me... Uh, I kind of wanted an alpha blend that out, but... I'm really starting to stray from CGA graphics if I do that. I'm already using a font that's not in there. Okay, now I need to actually make the things usable. key for this. Either enter or return, I think return. delay this I can actually do it on the key press I think that's safe uh, the question of whether it's just bad form to do that I should have multiple ticks per key press event. Well, it's a it's a uh, event pump. Or yeah, it, it pulls, so I shouldn't have to worry about these events just happening whenever. I really feel like I should defer it to during the tick. Which makes me really feel like doing something weird, like making it a callback. Setting the animations in here, but those are cosmetic, so that's why I guess I don't feel that bad about doing that. off the edge because I'm just going to make them keep going until they hit the, uh, the egg like the originals did. I want that animation. because I got my no there. Okay. I'm going to cue that up still and do it on the tick just because it feels cleaner. Flag to keep track of whether this thing's a seeker or not. Ugh, uh, I'm gonna do something ugly. And we use that. I feel like adding another flag just to keep track of something that's gonna be redundant anyway. And if 
Now if I ever decide to add a different kind of feather that has gravity zero, then I'm probably going to want to do more than just add the seeker flag. I'm probably going to want to have something more complex like an enum or something like that. Or completely custom behavior hooks for these things. I'm going to figure out the direction from the feather to the egg. And then I want to normalize this vector. there I don't need to do any of this stuff actually so let's see if we can sneak towards it calculate the vector calculate the distance divide by distance to normalize it and then we're just gonna add that right onto the velocity so this thing should just seek, whoa, a little fast. Yeah, it's got, it's got a pretty cool effect though. Okay, so I need to multiply this by something. Yeah, I'll put it here. And we're, we're gonna accelerate. Towards the egg a little smoother. Oh, that that's good. Oh, and I just got a seeker for completing all those waves, even though I don't have the code in to consume them yet. Oh, and the original seeker actually wasn't just one feather hit, it was multiple. It was worth, it was actually worth cracking the whole egg, it was basically just a win this um, match button. I feel like that is enough to warrant me doing this. Gravity zero is ugly if I'm actually throwing it into the... Um... Throwing it into this part down here. It's already kind of ugly anyway because I'm using a seeker flag instead of a damage value for that and it feels like they should be more independent but again I don't really want to well what, what I don't need that anymore that's right I'll move that all right so now when I hit this it should just take me into the next level and they can become a little less effective at the later levels. Or at least they don't act quite as fast. I like that effect though. Have them actually seek and now the feathers bounce off the walls. Ow. Bouncing keeps them from being lost if they go off the bottom. And these things now should set their facing based on their... You know what? In fact, the facing, I shouldn't even set facing at all. I should just look at the velocity. It occurs to me I've been doing all that stuff and I have not actually made a single commit. Let me track count though. Let's get the features in place. Get it to a break point and then I can... Uh, 
it was up here. Now if I shoot that seeker, it does its job, and then nothing. Yeah, well, I, I was like, what, in fourth grade or something at the time, so I did not think this uh, game through that well. I can still shoot the regular ones at least. I should get another one in a couple of waves after this. I'm gonna hit this thing like six times. Five now, four now. Alright. Oh wait, level three. Yeah, that's right. I get it on the every third level, which will be levels one, four, uh, seven, etc. There we go. And I got another seeker. And yep, okay. go everything updated need to actually have better commit discipline really each one of these line items should be a commit it's just kind of easy to flow right into the next one track input to fire override the standard feather I want to through with that as far as seekers are done We are actually pretty close to this thing being par uh, feature parody. What, what was I going to do? I was doing a refactor on the facing. That's right. I don't need that face variable. Yeah, I can just look at VX. Ah, oh, that's right. So I could actually use having one to read. So I'll just write it. In VX, not what you want. Okay, yeah, so good. Check it directly, but having that here is easier for this. That's the only place I should see it. Which means the feathers should now work correctly, and the bird. Okay, so when I've, I'm moving one way and I flap back, I can decelerate before I turn around. I don't turn around instantly. That feels fine. Yeah, I could go either way on it really. All right, and there's my seeker. And now if I play it, and then I go to this side, my seeker should turn around. Yep, there we go. Okay. Now it's time to pick apart the sound. Ah, oh, so many things open. Close them all. Let's take a look at the sound effects. I'm going to generate a square wave, put it into a sound data, and then I should be able to play those. I got segments. Each segment it has a duration in seconds and a frequency in hertz. And I got the sample rate and depth that I want, which I just end up hard coding down there anyway. I guess I could just hard code them up here. 
because it seems consistent with uh, what I've been doing. Yeah, I'm just going to flatten some of this stuff out because I don't need all this extra noise. I was just baking those things anyway. Alright, so I'm going to calculate... I can go ahead and modify that segments table. Seconds into samples. Frequency is already fine, right? Frequency. Yes, it's fine. Now I know how many samples I need. Can create a sound there. Yeah, they have a sound library and an audio library. Sound library is for manipulating sound data, and the audio library is for actually playing this stuff. And the help for it only gives me that one method, and I need the other ones. What are the other overloads for this thing? Sample rate bit channel. Okay, samples is total. Rate. Bit. Annals is mono. I should do it. Okay. Now I actually gotta generate square waves. Alright, so I got a time. What I'm gonna do is when the frequency is higher i'm going to move forward through time faster through a square wave that way i don't have to worry about like phase matching the segments i'm just going to walk through each segment through the samples in each segment and then just move my square wave forward faster depending on the frequency So it'll generate a one hertz square wave, and then if I want a three kilohertz square wave, I'll just walk forward through that one hertz square wave in time 3,000 times faster. each sample that walks each of the samples I do advanced time plus S I guess I gotta go with S I'm not using that it's the same way I did in the loop above using that variable in multiple places is not so great to have the short variable names because it's and repeating the same pattern that so would maybe I go ahead and rename them all as a general rule I tend to name variables in a length proportion to the size of the scope and these are two different variables and they have each have a fairly short scope but when you combine the fact that it's part of an overall pattern it's probably worth it to consider to treat them as if they're being reused so that is the Frequency divided by sample rate. Yeah, so now that should be time in seconds. And post equals post plus one. It's easier to just use a single counter to keep track of my sample position. 
instead of worrying about calculating it from running totals or whatever even though I'm, I'm just not using that loop variable there either set the sample and set sample takes I think just position in samples and value yeah position value position is post oh I need to do that above there start at zero there not not very Lua like it's zero based or yeah and then my square wave is a one hertz square wave based on that time value so it's uh, here's what I can do I can just if time is greater than one uh, equal to one and time equals time minus one because it just loops at one anyway so um, um, time is actually a modulo instead of uh, a straight linear time. Time greater than or equal to 0 0.5 and 1 or negative 1. That should generate a square wave. Ah, okay. You know, the documentation is kind of getting lost. Uh, don't usually usually I like to do a lot of my documentation through git commits this stuff is just kind of a mess so if I document it all now I'm gonna end up changing documentation as much as I change my code for these things. Clamp, throw, egg hit, bird hit, failure, wind condition. Means, means I need to figure out when they're actually going to come in. I think require just works in love. Uh, sound FX is the name of it. Oh, I hate when my Variable names don't match my file names. Uh, what is it? Alt F2 or something? Nope. Control F2. What is it? Control F2, yeah. It'll be a little less confusing. At some point, I need to do some multi file refactoring because, wow, this is getting to be a bit messy. create a new source and just play it whenever I want to play one of these things. When do I want to play them? Copy and pasting one line either way, but now that I'm adding a second line, might as well copy and paste one line as a function call. Let's see if this works. First, first sound effect. That's a little loud and obnoxious, but you know, whatever. I guess I can see if there's a... Oh yeah, I can... I'm change the settings on my mixer or something, I think. Except not when it's not running. Uh, where'd it go? There it is. That's not bad. Could be worse. Okay. That's still audible, but not obnoxious. Alright, put clamp, throw, egg hit, 
scroll is in here somewhere. somewhere broken I don't know I'm gonna rename this anyway because I want to make it clear what's going on here these are just the effects It's not too smart when it comes to the symbol rename. It really just renames every occurrence of the uh, the string. It only knows about keywords. All right, let's hope I didn't break everything. I don't remember if I actually had much by way of sounds in the original. The sounds were blocking. I had to play a sound and then draw a frame when the sound was done. On oh, the seeker, I forgot I want to make it animate too. The seeker was supposed to. When I'm drawing the feather, that's what it was. Let's make it blink. reusable value. I'll, I'll use that for an excuse for why I don't feel like typing that. That should make it blink when it's a seeker and not when it's not a seeker. Normal feathers are red and seekers move too fast to blink. Uh, I could just make it blink faster. Yeah, I'm gonna. Scope this down a bit because I'm going to modify it. Okay, I could see that. I don't know how clear that was, but it did blink. Can I, you can see a little bit of the red and the cyan and a magenta, I guess. I was working on the sound effects. Gotta go down through this list, the egg hit. Gotta find that. Oh, I don't wanna always play it. I wanna play it only if it was not playing the win one.
There we go. Yeah, and the original sound effects were actually that bad. And the bird getting hit. One thing I can't do right now is play the bird dying sound because it just quits immediately. You can take quite a lot of hits in one frame. And that causes that layering effect. I don't know if I care enough to fix that. Fail was what I called it. This is probably not going to actually play though because I think it's going to quit and then the sounds will stop playing immediately. Instead of quitting out immediately, maybe what I should do is just um, disable a bunch of stuff on loss. So freeze the game when you lose. Start playing the sound. I don't even need to actually have a, a lost flag. I can just check bird health. Might as well. One of those things where the simplification seems like something that'll come to bite me in the end, but I think about 80 or 90% of the time it doesn't. And the rest of the time, when it bites me, it's not the only thing, so I end up having to rip it up anyway for other reasons, so not gonna worry about that. So this should make the game freeze when I lose, which should let that sound play. And then I can figure out what I'm going to do about... The egg hit me a little harder there. Figure out what I'll do about actually quitting after the sound finishes. Well, it doesn't completely freeze. That's a little funny. So I might as well add that check in a few other places. Here's good. Oh, wait, not there. There we go. Still want to be able to quit. And I'm just going to end up putting it in a variable anyway. as a playing source and then I'll just wait for it not to be playing anymore. Alright, how do I check to see if the sound is already done playing? Get the source. I think is stopped would do it. Let's see if it plays the sound, it freezes, plays the sound, and then quits. this a little more complicated. Okay, 
you know what the store's not the result of trying to play it get the stores check to see yep all right and then i wanted to do one other thing which was getting tired of taking forever to die so i'm gonna beef the damage a lot and stop the nil value Oh, that is gone in the current version. I know I'm just supposed to check if it's not playing. Seems a little arbitrary. Okay. other thing the animation thing oh yes so now if I die in mid flap it just freezes that frame that sounds about right oh, I better change that back there Oops. This one. Testing player death is so weird because you just like trying to die as fast as you can. There we go. Uh, win, fail, bird hit, egg hit. Yeah, I think I've got all the sounds in. At least all the ones I designed. Okay, now, uh, last things are quality of life issues that like to make the window resize nicely. Commit this. is not going to be as easy, easy to see on the stream because I'm just capturing the uh, window and then uh, and then OBS stretches it but well I guess I guess it might come out looking more crisp instead of because OBS is going to filter this on um, on the stream but if I resize it before it gets captured, then that will make it crisper. I'm going to capture to a canvas. Captures it now we should see nothing again, but we hear it I just gotta draw that canvas onto the screen Actually, you know what all this stuff I did up here with the image stretching doesn't matter because I'm not going to stretch the image I'm going to stretch the canvas be back to where we were oh wow well, I'm not clearing the canvas clear a canvas efficiently is 
there a clear? There was a clear. No, there is not. Love the graphics, but clear. That's all there is to it. Okay. Okay. Back to where we were. Except now we have a canvas that we can stretch. I'm going to find the integer, the largest integer scaling that will fit on the screen. Sticking with my variables for this. just drawing it a clear does it pick a color oh yeah I got a color uh, okay those are optional good to the end of this function so I'm not going to be too picky about variable names. View mys bound with time scale. In fact, I really can just go right in line because not long enough to worry about scale and then zero for the rotation and the s for the scale. Try it out. Ooh. Oh, well, the canvas was cleared, not to black, but to transparent. That is black, and then now if I resize, oh, I can't resize the window because in the configuration I said no resizing. I'm going to, actually I'm going to comment these out and see what it does with this. No fixed size. Oh, whoa, whoa, okay. It did not do what I wanted it to do, and it's still not resizable. Whoops. Okay. I'll set the initial size, t.window, resizable, or just undo, 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 true. And what happens when I stretch this thing? Oh yeah, it's in the bottom right because I forgot to center it. Now I can do that and that. And I always need to fix the centering. Oh, what happened? Uh, I need to buy the whole thing by two. looking better oh yep 
Oh yeah, there we go. I resize it up and it hits a break point and then gets bigger. I don't know if you can tell that it got bigger on the stream, but the uh, scaling is now different. And hilariously enough, I'm still using the CGA four color palette, but um, my artwork is anti-aliased because it's a non-integer pixel coordinate, so I wonder if I should just be a purist and, and change that. Where I'm doing all my drawing. Okay, mostly the physics objects. See why not? Just be consistent. Give it the C function name. All right, what's going on now? If I resize this, I should see relatively crisp pixels. Happened to my flipping. Where did that. Yeah, this XY flipping is wrong. Now I'm lost. Oh, it's up here. Ooh. Don't know how that happened. It still kind of worked. That's right, and resize it. And I don't get any anti-aliasing. Nice alias. Except for that text, I'll give that a pass, and I suppose the health might. Well, but the health bar doesn't look like it's uh, doing that either, so. time when the bird hit. Oh, where am I? Technically, yeah, I'm pretty much at that milestone. What I need... I just want that one sound cooldown. Well, maybe I should do a a bunch of cooldowns in general. Because I was thinking of doing them for the controls.
can only hit one... I can only hit a control while I'm not already in an animation. Feels like it's fast enough that it's not really hurting much. There's a bit of a cooldown on the throw, so the throw doesn't respond immediately sometimes. Okay, that seems good enough. I'm going to do it as a threshold of how much, when the next one can be run, I guess. Oh, where is that code? Here it is. is now the next timer time when the sound is allowed to play so if it's in the past then I can now play it and set the next one to some small time in the future that seems pretty crisp the milestone I think let's get this committed and I don't think there's anything major missing now easier to work on than the original Q-Basic one. Not easier or harder to play though. Looks like there's a lot of luck involved. I'm not going to be able to beat that. There was, actually there was an ending screen. I mentioned it before. Maybe I should put that on the roadmap, but uh, it was pretty terrible. I think it was just text. It said something like, you finally crack the egg open and a little bird comes out or something. play around with a few of these extra things and see what I get. I feel like doing that sound filter thing. Let's, let's take a look at the sound. I think that'll be a nice easy global setting or something. And there are two ways I could do it. I could either set a global filter or maybe even a per sound. Okay. 
effect. Is effect supported? That could be tricky. The alternative is I do it in the samples in the generator. Let's see if the easy way works first. Okay. I don't know what effects, whether effects are supported, whether it's like a hardware or driver or platform thing, or whether it's just the version. Oh, tell me you got a low pass. Oh, you don't have a low pass. Well, that was the effect I wanted. The original PC speaker sounds were not that crisp. doing some math. Not bad. Might be a little intense. Oh no, that's more intense. That's not what I want to do. I want to go the other way. occurs to me that that value that I just put in is tuned based on the sample rate so if that changes then then these would have to change too and I don't know what how to calculate good values for them I think it's like uh, logarithmic or something ah well Okay, control input, mo mobile touchscreens kind of... I don't want to mess with that right now. Those are a little trickier. Joypads aren't all that hard to do. What it means is... I just need to genericize this. Oh, no way, that can actually just translate them into key presses. EPI 
up, DP down, okay. Now oh, what's the function? What's the hook name? This one. So I'm just going to make all controllers control one thing. Don't work. Oh, because I'm translating enter, but the key I used was return. The difference between them being, I guess, whether they're on the numpad or not, which I never really made the distinction. Okay, yeah, that works. Well, that was an easy one. Nice hack to clear that one quickly. And I'll leave the touch screen for later because there's a lot of messing around and testing involved. The way I usually end up having to do that is um, the first touch sets a like center point for the direction pad and then you slide from there, up, down, left, right, to do the movement. And then I have to do multi-touch for, uh, like, shooting the, uh, the feathers or whatever. Uh, I kind of hate having to have, like, magic positions on the screen or something, so that's why I tend to go with multi-touch for that. Yeah, so alternative CGA graphics mode. I remember I had a, the CGA monitor I had had a switch, and the switch would let you do this. Hilariously, I didn't get the gauges with it, but. I could bind that to a key or something. this. 
kill the king. Why not? It'd be a weird little Easter eggy kind of feature. should not be affected by this, but everything in the screen is affected. And I can toggle that on and off. Yeah, I had a hardware toggle button for that. But apparently I hear there are supposed to be modes for it or something in the adapter. I'll call that good enough. the joystick. Better document that too. Yeah, easiest way to, is to check what I deleted off my to-do list. Everything else is kind of iffy. I'm starting to think maybe this is a good stopping point for today. I mean, we did manage to get pretty far through it. Got a game that works, resizable, has this nice uh, integer, whoops, integer scaling thing. Pretty decent remake of the original. if some of the features are not exactly at parity. Feels a lot like it did. I mean, other than being V-synced and 60 frames per second and all that. GitLab, so if anyone feels like uh, messing around with it, grab a copy, you know, maybe uh, make some pull requests, who knows. So that's it for today. Uh, see you next time.